What's up guys, Evil Deer here. Now before I jump into today's story about the first time I ever stayed with an Esperanto family, or a couple I should say, I just want to give you guys a little bit of an update on my filming. Now, I do... Yeah, I do. I have a very small channel. I have very few subscribers, but I still want to make these videos better. I want to try and improve them as much as possible. Now, you may have noticed that my filming has got a little bit better. It's no longer like this shaky, like handheld spastic thing. Um, but the lighting is still terrible. Like, it's probably pretty dark in here for you guys because I have to film at night. I work during the day. And I, I have just recently purchased some lights and they're currently in the mail so they should be here by Friday I'm so excited <laughs> anyway so those are coming and hopefully after Friday my filming will be better if not I'll blame it on something else because it's never me it's never the person behind the equipment it's just me it's the equipment anyway so to today's story so um this is basically the first time I ever stayed with an Esperanto family or I should say couple as most of you probably know if you've watched my previous vlogs, I recently travelled for a year with my missus on a honeymoon. Um, and part of our trip, we were actually staying with Esperantis in different locations, so in like um, Switzerland, Germany, France, all these different spots. We, we stayed with Esperantis or we visited them, depending on like you know, how things worked out. So just before our trip, I said to my missus, hey look, we're, we're travelling to Europe, so why not just contact some Esperantis? Maybe they can hook us up with some locations, you know, maybe we can see some stuff. And my missus is like, Mmm, you are pretty crazy. They're probably pretty crazy. Yeah, okay, why not? So I sent off a few emails to the uh, like the different Esperanto associations around Europe. I can't really speak tonight. It's killing me. Anyway, I sent a few emails off to the European associations, um, and eventually one of the emails I sent to the Swiss Esperanto Association bounced its way around Switzerland and ended up in this small little town area called Montreux. I think that's how you pronounce it in West Switzerland. Now, for those who don't know Switzerland, it's kind of like divided up into three language groups. I think that there might be more, but that's that's all I know. So in the west you have uh, French, up in the north you have German, and down south you've got Italian. Um, Montour is in the west, it's like right on near the border of France and it's one of the most beautiful areas I've ever seen. But anyway, so the email ended up there and this lovely old Esperanto couple said, yeah sure, come stay with us. So I was like, score! This is the first time ever I'm going to be staying with actual real speaking, living, breathing Esperantists. That sounds really weird, but anyway. So we flew into Europe, we landed in Milan, we stayed there for a day, and then we caught our train up to Montour. And now at this point, we really didn't know what to expect. I'd spoken with these guys a little bit, um, a few pictures were exchanged, mainly of me going, and stuff like that, but <laughs> nothing major. They probably thought I was more scary than I thought they were. So anyway, we end up in Montour, we get off the train, and I'm looking for this elderly Swiss couple. I'm, I'm expecting maybe like a little Esperanto flag or something, but no, nothing like that. They come up to me and they, they go, they go Saluton, which is like hello in Esperanto. And then I'm like, oh, la, 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 and then we start speaking away. Anyway, the nicest couple ever. They, they try to grab my bags. Now, these are big, heavy bags, and these are elderly people. I'm like, no, 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 no don't do that, don't do that. So we took our bags down to their car, and again, they tried to take them off me and put them in the boot, but I had to do it because I'm such a gentleman like that. But anyway, they get us in this car, and then they drive about one kilometer, and they go, we're here now. And I'm thinking, we could have walked here. You guys didn't have to come pick us up, you know. Probably would have enjoyed it, you know, to see the area, but they're like, no, 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 it's okay, you don't, we don't want to make you walk. Anyway, so we look up and we're, we're parked on the side of the road and we're looking down the road and we look to the left, okay, and all you can see is this massive, most beautiful lake you can imagine. It's like, oh, you live here? And then we look up the other side of the road and it's kind of like a hill, so they're on the side of a hill. And then we see their little house and it's like this little fairy tale house that you see in like those movies where it's like sitting out the hill. I'm half expecting this little chimney of smoke to be coming out the top and you know the evil woman to come out and go, come inside and have cookies! But no, none of that. Anyway, so they take us up to this house and it's, it's the most like stereotypical European house you've ever seen. For Europeans that probably is like, what are you talking about? But for us Australians, we know what we're talking about. Anyway, so they take us up to this house and they open it up and inside they've got like old Roman statues and nice paintings and it's, this house is better than any house I've ever been invited to. See, I'm one of those people that if you saw me in the street, they're like, stay away from that guy. You don't know where he's been. And these people are willingly letting me into their house. This is, this is surprising for me. So anyway, I go in and they're like, 
would you like something to eat? You know, this is all in Esperanto, but for my English speakers, would you like something to eat? And I'm like, oh, it's okay, we can go get our own food, we'll just walk around. They're like, no, 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 sit down, we've prepared a few things, and we look at the table, and it's just covered in food, like, everywhere, just food freaking coming out of everything. They got food on the cabinets, and I'm like, oh my god, they're trying to fat me up and eat me. But anyway, so they've got all this lovely food, like a million different cheeses, like, it's crazy. And so we sit down, me and my missus, and we're like, oh my god, how much, what do we eat? And they're like, just take whatever you want, take whatever you want. And I find out a little bit later, because they've got all these different meat dishes on the table, that they're actually vegetarians, they don't even eat meat. They just went out and brought meat for us. Like, how nice is that? So anyway, we're, we're like eating all these different cheeses, and my missus like has very limited Esperanto, but suddenly she's really good, she's like, dunkun, 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 like continually, like this bobbly head thing that you see in the cars. And we're just eating away and they're like, oh, so did you enjoy the meal? And I'm like going, oh, I'm so fat right now. Yeah, it was pretty good. And at this point, we had actually got there pretty late in the day. It was like in the afternoon. And um, they're like, well, we'll show you to your room. And it's upstairs, like up this like little windy stairs type of thing. We go up and they go, this is your room. And the room that they're showing us is actually bigger than my room in my actual house, my apartment. And they're like, this is your bed. And it's like this giant king size bed. Here's the internet password and it's like, Wow, you have to pay everywhere else to get this stuff. This is like a five-star freaking hotel with the nicest people in the world and they don't expect anything from me. And I'm like, I felt bad. I wanted to go speak Esperanto with them to at least give them something in return. They're like, no, 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 no. You're here on your holiday. It's okay. Go in there, you know, um, get a good sleep and then you can go out early tomorrow. You can see the sights and it's like, wow, thank you so much type of thing. Like you're feeling really bad at this point. We even got our own personal toilet up there. It's like insane. Anyway, so... They close the door, my missus is like, wow, I didn't know anyone could be this nice. And we open up the window, remember I said this was on the side of the hill, we open it up, and all you see is this massive view of a lake, like, in every direction. There's no buildings or spastic stuff in the way, like in Sydney. It's just, like, perfect view type of thing. And it's like, wow, this is crazy. So anyway, we cark it, we go to bed. Next morning we wake up, we come downstairs and we're like, uh, you know, like in our jocks and stuff. Well, I was, my missus is properly dressed. And they're like, oh, we've prepared you breakfast. Again, food everywhere. It's just crazy. I'm like, do these people just sit here preparing food for us? Like, what's going on? And not just that, we sit down, we start eating. And he's like, so have you planned your trip? And I'm like, oh, I've got a couple of ideas of what I want to do. You know, I'll just go down to the train station. I'll just jump on a few trains. We'll just go, and, you know, onto the ferries and just figure it out. And he's like, Oh, so you want to go on the ferries? I'm like, yeah, I'd like to cross the lake. And he goes, pushes this piece of paper across, and he's got all these plans for like ferries, brochures, everything. And I'm like, oh, okay. And he goes, you also said you want to go on the trains. Did you want to go see the lakes inland? I'm like, oh, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. And he just grabs this other pile of like brochures and stuff and pre planned everything already, all like highlighted, marked out. And I'm like, did you just plan our entire trip for us? This is awesome. So it's not just like a five-star hotel, but it's also like your own personalized travel service. Like what more could you want? So they give us all this stuff and it's all, we go around, we travel around the area and we see all the, the you know, the ferries and stuff like that. And we come back and we're there for three days. And every day they do the exact same thing. Nice food. They don't want to intrude on us like as if they could. We're intruding on them. We're in their house. But they, they try to like, uh, are you sure you sure you have got nothing better to do like you could go check Facebook type of thing And it's like no 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 I'd, I'd like to speak and get to know my hosts You know I feel bad at the moment So yeah I speak with them for a while there it turns out that they're learning Esperanto because they're retired And they just want to you know they just wanted to learn something different and just try something new So and their, their Esperanto is pretty good as well So anyway we um For those next three days we travel around Swiss and we come back and our next stopover actually like something happened and we couldn't make it and we're like oh damn we're gonna have to stay in Montour for an extra day um, so we're gonna have to go get a hotel because we only told these people three days and when they found out they're like no 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 we're going down to Rome not tomorrow the next day so you can just stay until we go if you want we can just give you the keys and you just drop it in the mailbox before you go because we'll already be gone we're like these people are trusting us with their lives like how how nice are they you can't imagine and so we stay there another day, same type of service. And then when, by the time we're finally about to leave, we, they drive us again to the train station, which is like a kilometer away. And I'm like, you know, you don't have to do this. But anyway, they take us to the train station. My missus is like, oh, they're so nice. They're better than your parents, Richard. Oh. And I'm like, oh, geez, make me feel bad, don't you? <laughs> 
<laughs> but anyway, so we go to the, the train station and we catch the train out of there. My missus is actually crying over this whole thing because she's never met strangers so nice to her before. And she's like, wow, Esperanto is actually useful. So that is the like the story of the first time I ever stayed with an Esperanto family. And I literally, I could not have asked for a better first impression. That was the best in the world. Now, I would have said their name during the story, but again, I don't like to give out names unless I've gotten permission. And I don't want these people to get inundated by Esperanto's from around the world going, can I stay? <laughs> because after that story, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people that are like, wow, that sounds awesome. I'm going straight to Montreux. And then again, there can't be that many Esperanto there, so you probably figure it out pretty quickly. Anyway, so that's the story. Now, if you enjoyed this story, especially my Esperanto story, or you want to hear more military stories, or wife stories, or cat stories, or I don't know, me falling off a tree story, I, it doesn't matter. Just tell me what your interests are. If you want anything new, different, just tell me. Like this video, and please, please, share it around. And yeah, that's it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And I will definitely see you in the next video. And my camera is flashing right now. It's about to run out of battery. So I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.